Okay, now that we've created custom fields on the opportunity object uh, for sales handoff, uh, we are now going to cover how to create a custom object to manage the onboarding workflow. Uh, this object is going to be called onboarding project. It is going to relate to accounts and opportunities and users. Um, and there's going to be several uh, fields which track uh, important dates associated with each onboarding stage. And, um, you know, we're just going to go over that entire process and how to build some automation around this uh, as the series goes on. And then we're also going to cover reporting uh, after you start tracking some of that key data as part of the workflow. So here we have the schema. Um, and what we're going to do is go through the whole process of creating this object, creating all the fields. And because we already have the schema, it should be pretty quick. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to start by logging back into this. So we're going to start by going to setup and we're going to go to object manager. Then we're going to go to create custom object. Then we're going to call it onboarding project. For the plural label, we're just going to add an S to it. Does it start with a vowel sound? Yes. Description, object for onboarding workflow. Context sensitive help settings. No, we don't need that. Enter record name and label format. We're just going to keep it as it is with the data type text. We're going to allow reports. We're going to allow activities. We're going to, we don't necessarily need to do these. Allow sharing. We definitely want bulk API access and streaming API access. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to deploy it right in production here. We'll allow search, uh, share, we'll just allow, allow notes. And yeah, why not? Let's launch the new custom tab wizard after saving this because that's something that you have to do. So we have to add a tab to this. Uh, I'm just going to put a car and splash play to that is. Go ahead. Next. Default on, next. And then this is, are we going to add this to every single application here? I mean, I think we really just want to add it to the customer success app that we have. We'll save that. And now what we have to do is go through this and add the fields. I do want to check the add to the tab. And yeah, we have the object here as part of our customer success app. So, um, but let's get to adding the fields. So let's see what we already have. We have name, we have owner, we have created by, last modified by. So we're gonna have to add all of these, account, opportunity, onboarding, owner. Uh, I guess onboarding owner could just be the owner ID of this object. So we could leave that as is, but we do need to build a lookup to the account object and to the opportunity object. So let's start with that. We're gonna go to lookup, that's right here. Let's go next and relate to account, next, account, field label, account, Yeah, this should be required. Next. And then we'll add it to the layout of all these related lists, why not? Save and new. And then we're gonna have to do it again for opportunities. So many objects here. Required. Okay, so we have those first two fields. Onboarding owner, I'm just gonna use owner ID for that. Now we have to add stage. It's gonna be a pick list. And then let's enter some values. So some typical values you could use Q, kickoff, setup, training, go live. Use the first value as the default. Sure, why not? I mean, yeah, you should always have have this be required, I would say. Now we need some new fields here. So we're gonna do, as you can see in the schema, we have stage one date, stage one note, stage two date, stage two notes. The notes isn't necessarily required. The date definitely is in order to move uh, through each stage. Um, and the other thing is you should just rename these fields based on whatever you actually chose for the stage names. So I'm gonna go and start making these. So we'll start with date. We'll call it Q, uh, Q date. So this would be the date that it entered into the queue. Next. These are not required to save the record, but they will be required as you proceed through certain stages. We'll go save and new. Then we're gonna go uh, Q notes. And 
I'm just going to speed through the rest of this and not really talk because it's going to be very repetitive. So uh, fast forward starting now. Okay, so we have officially gone through and created all the important fields that we wanted to set up. And what we're going to do now is just adjust the page layout. Um, so what it did was it put everything here in this one uh, view, which doesn't really look that nice. Um, so let's add a section, call it stage fields. I mean, And I just like to add them in order here. And then I would just put these in parallel on the opposite side in the layout. And then I would also create a, a section called details. That's where you'd have all these standard required fields here. So we'll put owner at the top. Uh, we'll put count over here, opportunity, there. That should be good, but let's just save this. Okay, so we've saved the page layout. We've added a bunch of fields. Now let's go look at this object. So I'm gonna make a new one just to test it. So the opportunity that we were just on was alpha tech. Uh, we'll call them <coughs> alpha tech learning project. And then this is going to relate to alpha tech starting in the queue stage, which started today. Oh, I realized I made a mistake here. I'll fix that. Then you can go ahead and click save and you can see what this object looks like. I'm just going to go back and fix that queue notes field, edit change field type, make it text. All right, so we should be good now. So we have a nice little view here of our object. And the idea is that as you go through the stages, uh, these will populate. And there's certain things that you're going to want to do to make the workflow a little bit better. So one thing is that you can add is a path across the top, which I'll show you how to do that quickly. Um, if you go to setup, you go to path settings, you go enable create a new path. We're going to call it onboarding path stage, onboarding stage path. And it's going to be onboarding project on master, pick with stage, and it will look like this. And then we're going to add in some of the fields here for each. So we'll add this, we'll add queue date, queue notes. Let's go to kickoff. Let's add kickoff date and notes. Go to setup. Set up date, set up notes, training, training date, training notes, go live, go live date, go live notes, save it, activate the path, and then we can also uh, enable confetti if we want to get fancy. And if they go live, we're going to see some confetti done. And we have to do some more work here in order to make that visual. So you have to go back to now the onboarding object, you have to create a lightning record page. So you can go here, you go record page, call it onboarding, onboarding project record page. And this is going to be for onboarding project. Next, we'll just do the classic with the right sidebar. And then just want to see what we already have. So we just have a, what's on the top? It's not, so they have a tabs page. So tabs, and then it's related lists. 
And then if you go to details, it's record and detail. And then on the right, we had activities. And then at the top, let's put the path. And we'll save it. We'll activate it. We can put it as the org default. Sure, why not? Save that for everybody. But let's also put it as the app default for customer success. And then I think that's all we have to do. Click save. And now we go back to this. You'll see the path at the top and the details. I want to make a few more changes here. So bear with me. Uh, so if we go back to tabs. I want to make details the default tab. And I would also like to add a highlights panel at the top. And we can save this, go back, yeah. refresh this. OK, you'll see that now at the top. Lastly, if you want to actually see some fields in here, this is some obscure Salesforce knowledge, but I'll show you how to do that. Go back to the object, compact layouts, system default. You have to make a new one. So call it uh, on board project default, or maybe customer success default, because it's in that app. You put the name first, always. And then let's bring in some other important fields like account, opportunity, um, and oh, we also want the owner bring that up, save it, and check the assignments, edit assignment, save it, let's refresh this. I think I need to clear the cache and refresh because it's not showing up. Can I add one more field here? Stage. And if we just clear the cache and refresh, the stage is there now so you can sort of play around to see what fields you want to show across the top there and now we have a path where we can work through this with the onboarding team um, you can re record activities against this object uh, like something like this you can assign a date related to a person um, you know See if there's anyone at Alpha Tech. Yeah, let's relate it to someone here. Okay, so we're gonna email them about to email them to schedule the kickoff call. And now we have a task related to this object, which is also related to the account. And you can see uh, that now show up here in the alpha tech activity log. One last thing I want to cover here actually is how to uh, add validation rules so that these dates are enforced when you try to migrate out of stages. So in order to do this, you would have to create a validation rule. And the way that I've been doing this now is just using ChatGPT to write my validation rules, write me so let's see what okay so it's saying you if it's kickoff and q date is blank then you can't progress um but i want it to be a bit more complicated uh add so yeah here we go so basically what you have to do is make these validation rules so that Q date must be populated in order to move to one of these stages. So um, what you would do is now go into back to setup. We already have it open here. Make a validation rule. We call it Q date populated. And then you would put it here so that you can't go to kickoff or you can't go to setup uh, training or go live. So we're gonna have to add those in as well. Training, go live, check the syntax. Okay, looks good. Please pop, you must populate, you date, 
order to progress, something like that. Copy this. And now we're going to clone this. We'll call it kick off date populated. So change this to kick off. And then we can get rid of that. Must populate kick off date. Save it. Okay, so now we have validation and rule in rules in place so that you can't progress without filling out date fields. So you'll see I should be able to go to kick off, but I should not be able to go to setup because kick off is not populated, but I can go here. Now, if I populate the queue date um, or kickoff date, then I should be able to progress, so on and so forth. Um, you can add even more automation if you want to populate the date when you actually migrate. Um, but that's really up to you how much you want to build around this. And uh, yeah, I know that was a lot of information in a long video, um, but. I hope that it highlights how uh, easy it is to build an object uh, that can become a core piece of functionality for one of your teams. As you're starting to realize, this looks almost exactly the same as an, as an opportunity. It's just for a different team. And really all you're doing is taking customers and moving them through a funnel, progressing them through different stages uh, to drive a certain outcome with your business. Uh, now, in the next video, I'm going to build some automations to help further improve your workflow, make it more efficient, uh, and also just to hopefully give you some ideas as well. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for now, and thanks for watching.